Okay, it's uh, two o'clock, so I think we will get started. Uh, Stephanie, I'll hand it over to you to um, just give everybody an overview. Great, thanks, Gail. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Stephanie Bonham. I'm the manager of the Interiors Division at AAA. I'd like to thank you all for attending and welcome, welcome you to our presentation today, Workplace of the Future. Before we get started, I have a couple of housekeeping items to go over. Um, everyone will be muted during the presentation, but feel free to enter any questions into the chat box. Um, all attendees who are entered to are entered to win one of our ten fifty dollar account credits. We will be um, contacting you by email after the meeting and letting you know if you won. Now, I would like to introduce Dash Rovner. He's our business development manager and Jack Reed, the learning manager and learning development team manager for Han, who will be making the presentation. Take it away. That's a long title, Jack. Wow. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining our webinar today in the Workplace of the Future tour with Han and AAA. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Han, we are uh, one of the largest office furniture manufacturers in the country. Um, with facilities based out of Iowa, but we are here located in the Bay Area. Um, we're really excited to present the workplace of the future. Hopefully our goal uh, for this tour today is uh, giving you some inspiration as you think about your office space um, as we return post COVID and what that looks like um, from a, a furniture standpoint. So um, from here, I'll just pass it off to Jack to help lead our tour today. Thank you, Dash. So uh, good morning or good afternoon. I'm sorry, time zones always screw me up. Uh, my name is Jack Reed, as those before me had mentioned, and my title is learning manager. It really is just kind of a big fancy term for a guy that typically travels across the country and, and talks about furniture with, with individuals scattered across the board. And I've had the opportunity to actually do that uh, a number of times within the last couple months. And I think that's really great and important, especially when we're talking about this tour here today, because let me tell you, everybody is, is all over the place when it comes to returning to the office, how they want to do it, what they need. And I'm here to tell you, there's no one size fits all approach to this. So like Dash mentioned, when we walk through this tour today, we call this our, our workplace community. It, it's completely digitally built from the ground up where we can create different pockets of blended solutions of all of our products in, in meaningful ways that allow you to draw that inspiration and that thought starter to think about, you know, how, how best do you want to return to work and bring your employees back? And what does that look like for your business overall? Because it's always going to differ from, from business to business. So if you have any questions on some of the furniture layouts we talk through, please enter them in the chat stop us I'm more than happy to to go through those a little bit more in depth if need be and i'm going to get that tour pulled up as we speak i'm going to drop my camera down to make sure we don't have any sort of lag happening and we'll get started and what's a better place to get started than in the reception space of your office right it's the place where most of the time your employees first come through the door and almost always your visitors come in. So before we even talk through furniture and looking at this full ecosystem environment, uh, I wanna talk through just setting the tone with fabrics and finishes in your offices. And here at Han, one of the big trends we've been starting to see is really getting back to this authentic feel with the look of your office. And what I mean by that is, Instead of getting away, instead of bringing in the, the super industrial, the monochromatic finishes and fixtures, more and more people are, are looking to request natural elements. Um, so you see a heavy use of wood grains throughout the space, a, a large presence of different plants, and some of the color waves of you know your light neutrals, your earthy tones, but one that, that we hear is extremely popular is going to be that terracotta color, that, that kind of burnt or darker red or orange, and promoting those natural, authentic feels. When we've been you know, cooped up at home for so long, coming back to the office, we really want to feel as comfortable as possible and, and bringing in those, 
those natural elements really help that. And so you can see that not only with the decor, the walls, but right away with this, the reception station in this space too. You can see that it's got this contemporary slabbed front. It's staggered, but you've got a lot of wood grain that helps to shine through and, and make that statement piece as well. So in this office space, as a visitor is welcomed in, they're not only greeted here at the reception station, but they will probably be ushered over to a welcoming area to sit and relax and wait for whomever they might be meeting with. So thinking about those, you probably envisioned in your head, uh, individual, maybe wood, maybe metal chairs, all lined up, scattered against a wall with maybe some small tables in between. But rethinking that and rethinking the importance of space in the office nowadays, it's not just individual little reception chairs for guests to sit in. You wanna create a warm, inviting place that uh, welcomes you right off the bat. And, and one of the ways that we've seen people really doing that is incorporating these larger sofa pieces. They're modular, so you can pick and choose the size if you want to. But what really makes these stand out, not only in look, but also in comfort, is gonna be that pillow back structure to the cushion. So you can see that large, lush pillow back. It's really inviting. You sink into it a little bit and it reminds you of your lazy boy or your sofa at home. And whether you're a guest or an employee in a building, one of the most critical elements you can start to promote within that space is feelings of home. We've been in the home for so long and it helps ease that transition back into the office and create an exciting place that people are looking forward to returning. So whether it's the large sofa setups, the individual club chairs that you can see to the opposite side, one big thing with welcoming spaces is we really wanna turn the corner and not make them just for welcoming. While that can be the mainstay, you can see that this setup is really directly a part of the main office. You can see behind that partition wall, the open office plan. So it's very easy for employees to also come over here and touch down and have conversations or small meetings and create this as a dual functional in, in a high traffic area. And on top of that, it's going to be versatile in terms of what seating you choose to sit in as well. So looking back to this wall, you'll notice completely different types of seating. There's individual chairs and then there's one long row of soft seating or, or a bench. And thinking through that, this really is going to resonate throughout the entire floor plan of this building in that furniture today doesn't always have to be a permanent solution. But if you're investing in furniture, you want to make sure that it's there for the long haul. And when we think through our furniture that we're offering to customers, it's furniture that's flexible and it's adaptable. So it can change with the needs of the business, whatever they are, whether they're anticipated or unanticipated. So right now, many of us might still be seeing requirements for social distancing um, and, and other ways to create healthy spaces. So in this layout, while it may not be the most socially distant, individual chairs allows you to easily accommodate that without sacrificing the style or the structure of your furniture. So you can easily space out these smaller chairs with the sled bases, which are on the left. But at the same time, that wall of seating on the back side is all individual seats. So if you ever needed to space users back out again, or if you wanted to just order a few right now and come back in and, and flush out the full furnishings later, you can add and subtract as you need to, to be able to accommodate those different needs. So flexibility and adaptability. And I don't know about you, I, I personally can't think of a more flexible or adaptable space than a training room or a multi-purpose room in an office, right? And this is one that, that really hasn't changed a whole lot throughout the pandemic, but it's really reinforced its need and its purpose and its function, right? Adaptable and flexible. So when you look at a large space like this, where you have lightweight furniture, it's gonna be easily moved around and rearranged. So whether you're holding a tra training, kind of like the way it's set up right now, you're holding a large meeting, maybe taking all these tables and, and turning them into a U-shape, um, or even a customer event, some sort of employee activity, where you can then again, take these tables in and create small little pods or breakouts. All the furniture in this space is gonna be on casters, on wheels. So it's easily mobile for anyone to rearrange, depending on who's using the space. 
So you can see these chairs here, extremely lightweight on wheels. The tables themselves not only can be moved around, but also the tops can be flipped on their sides so that you can nest them and tuck them away when you don't need them. Because a lot of times, sometimes meetings don't ever go as planned. You've got a tight turnaround for the next event. Having extra furniture in the back allows for those last minute switches and changes or additions as you might need it. So thinking through multi-purpose rooms, training rooms, that furniture is really going to stay the same, but it, it really lately has maximized its importance in terms of versatility. So when you think through some of those larger spaces, mobile tables, lightweight seating is a great way to go. So let's take a step back and look into that open office I, I gave you a glimpse at earlier. So out here in this space, we're going to see a lot of individual stations primarily used by the, the majority of the office workers in this layout, right? So most of the teams will be housed in this area. You've got private offices for some of the manager level employees. And in this area, you notice there's, there's not too many panels. Panels aren't ever going away, but one of the, the larger trends we're seeing is moving away from larger individual workstations, whether it's panels, cubicles, private offices, and scaling them down a bit to provide more flexibility in your floor plan to create more collaborative pockets. So you think about all that soft seating we saw in the welcoming area, it's not just for the welcoming area. You can create those little nooks and crannies throughout the office to give fluid movement to your employees to switch up where and how they're working throughout the day. And so thinking about that and workstations pairing down, I want to walk you through a couple of these different workstation setups. The first one I want to look at is here with the teal chairs. And think of this setup as a hoteling um, or a moteling setup. So when you think about that, you know, how often do you stay in a hotel? One or two nights. Maybe you're coming into the office as a hybrid or a remote worker one or two days out of the week, potentially even less than that. When you come in, you really only need a space to set up shop, plug in your laptop, stow away a personal bag if you have it, and give you that physical space to do that. A lot of times, if you're a remote or one of these hybrid workers, you're coming into the office to collaborate, have meetings. So you may spend most of your time in a conference room in one of those collaborative spaces I just mentioned, uh, or even a private office. So a hoteling setup can be extremely minimal and provide all the function it needs at the same time. Here you can see it's basically just a height adjustable table desk. So that's flat work surface, small storage on the side. And what's great about this specific setup is it's going to be pretty flexible on top of its purpose. So you don't have panels that you're tying your desk into. You don't have all of this bulky parts and pieces that you can't move or rearrange. All you can do is if you ever need to is spin those tables around. You can put them into panels in the long term. Uh, having lightweight furniture like this opens the door to those changes in the future so much more easily than anything we could have done before. So there's a couple setups. You can see the, the small cubbies here that are mounted to the desk as well. Perfect for your backpack, your purse, things that you want to lock away that you might leave unattended out in this open area. And so those are kind of hoteling stations popping up more and more as we start to see more and more offices and employers adopt greater remote work as well as great, greater hybrid work. Now for users that are in the office, a majority of the time, most of the time, maybe you have those dynamic collaborative teams and those teams would fit in perfectly in a benching setup, which is these workstations with the screens in between them. They're going to be a bit larger and a bit more permanent than what we saw before with the hoteling. So these will be fixed in their location, but again, promote collaboration. You can see minimal barriers between users um, for the long term, as well as larger storage to store more personal belongings as you come back to this space day after day. And so looking at those and, and looking at this whole open office, that's a whole lot of chairs for people to sit in and join Zoom calls all at the same time, right? So Zoom calls, team calls, webinars, 
they really peaked throughout the pandemic, right? It was an easy way to get everyone together. And it's something that's not going to go away. Not that it needs to, but in a space like this, having everyone on different calls, trying to talk over one another, it can get pretty loud. So I want to direct your attention upwards and talk through not necessarily a trend, but an important fixture in the office that's growing in importance as people return, and that's acoustics. So acoustical um, tiles, different materials that can add on to your existing office very easily. You can see here, these are hanging baffles. So they're just suspended by the ceiling and they help dampen all of that excess noise as it bounces throughout the room. And I always like to think of that noise, especially in an office like this as a bouncy ball. So if you think about a bouncy ball and you throw it against a wall or throw it against the ground and it's just bouncing in this big open area and you think about 20 people doing that, it's a whole lot of chaos, right? And that's your brain trying to process words, whether they're coming from your webinar or someone else's. So bringing in acoustical solutions will have a growing importance throughout returning to the office too. And not only in the open office, but also in private offices. So when we look at a private office, you can see there's even acoustical solutions on that back wall with those different diamond uh, tiles. And here in this private office, I picked this one because it's a good example of how you can easily scale down the furniture in the office and give that excess floor space to other areas. So instead of having a large L or a U-shaped private office with all that work surface, all that storage, you can easily pare it down to something simple and clean like this, where you have realistically all the storage you'll ever need, right? Most of the things we utilize are stored on our computer as it is. You can take work wall tiles. So individual tiles, they're made of different materials that you can attach, create marker boards, additional shelving very easily, and then even pare down guest seating. A lot of times private offices will have probably two chairs for guest seating and you don't always need that. So maybe putting in one, you can see a cushion on top of the storage if you do have an additional person, but by eliminating the need to have more people in this office, you give way to other areas where you can meet and have conversations too. And so as we jump ahead, we'll take a look at some of those areas and the beginning of some of those areas. So, so far we haven't seen a whole lot of panels and I'm here to tell you panels aren't going away. When we think about office users that come into the office every day, panels are a fantastic solution for them. It gives you that physical separation, that individual workspace that a lot of people want and work best in, but you might see the materials in these panels or cubicles change a little bit. So looking at this, a lot of times people are used to a panel or a cubicle that's going to be a bit of softer um, surface. You think of a, a tackable fabric solution, but that's not the only option. Here, we We've not only incorporated those standard panels, which you can see on the back side of the workstation, but here in the front, we have what we call gallery panels. So gallery panels are hard surface laminate panels that help provide that space division. What's great about gallery panels is not only do they give you a clean, sleek look, they warm up the space with wood grains, but being a hard surface, they're also gonna be easily cleanable. And when we think through cleaning the office, um, that's probably a topic that's been more talked about in the last year than ever before. So promoting easily cleanable workstations helps mitigate germ transmission. And on top of that, we've really focused in on not only the workstations, but our seating, our fabrics, our acoustics, and making sure that they are gonna be cleanable with some of those harsher cleaners. You think bleach cleanable solutions and, and things like that. But here at Han, we're not necessarily the experts in all of those different cleaning materials and, and products. What's great about having the opportunity to, to partner with AAA here today and, and talk through this is not only do we get to be the furniture partner, but you also get that partner to guide you throughout the entire office. So where we hand off the baton with furniture, AAA keeps going. They talk through the different materials you might need to clean this area, fulfill cafes, and really guide you through that process of returning to work whatever it looks like. And maybe your workstations are gonna look pretty much the same. So this is a pretty standard cubicle setup, right? And some of the options that you can do to potentially reconfigure or just open up the space a little bit is still maintain your panels, 
but try to lower them a little bit. One of the, the growing trends we've seen um, really in popularity is keeping panels, but making sure they're as short as possible. Our shortest panel is 35 inches high, and then maybe adding in some glass to, to clean up the look. It allows for light to easily pass into everyone's workstations, and you still get that open collaborative environment feel. Now, we've talked a lot about open collaborative environments, and we all know that there's times throughout the day that we just want to get away. We want to get up from our desk, maybe sit down somewhere else, get away from the noise of someone else on a, on a Zoom call, and great pockets built into the office help accentuate that, giving you areas to better focus on your work, and again, creating that fluid ecosystem. And it can be something as simple as these club chairs here with high back screens, where you still have that privacy, not only dampening the sound of someone else, but that physical privacy too. So if you wanna take a personal phone call, fire off a few emails, you can easily walk away from the desk, do that here for a few minutes and come back. And so in that first half, I talked about scaling down some of those workstation spaces. And depending on your office, your layout, doing that will offer you the opportunity to bring in more collaborative spaces, kind of like these three areas I'm showing you here. That first area, creating conference rooms that are no longer inside a room, right? Taking a, a larger table, creating a collaborative space, maybe a space to share your screen, dial in someone on a Teams call, at the same time, you can also bring in more of that soft collaborative furniture, right? Giving you a lounge piece where you have that, again, West Hill product, that, that orange welcoming furniture we saw in the beginning, using a different light designed for employees to come and touch down, maybe have a small meeting or just relax, socialize, catch up. And then when we think about paring down workstations and taking storage out of some of those areas, we're not talking about taking storage out of the office completely, but putting it in a different spot. And one great way to do that is creating storage banks. So you can see here all individual lockers where I can come and put my coat in my backpack and bring it here right away in the morning and come and get it when I leave for the day, because I'm probably not gonna be using it all the time. And not only that, creating a storage bank that is dual purpose, storing your stuff, but also again, another touchdown space where you and other employees can come and sit, catch up, have a brainstorming conversation. And I know what you're thinking, I got a lot of existing rooms. You probably do. But thinking through existing rooms, we can also simply change some of the furniture in them to meet completely different needs too. So this is a great example of what could have been an existing conference room and removing the larger conference table where everyone is much more close quarters, facing each other across the way and swapping out that one conference table for individual laptop tables. So with individual laptop tables, you can easily fit six, seven, eight people into this space and allow them to distance themselves as needed and create a location that everybody in the office can still meet and have a meeting in but again, on their own terms and, and at their own comfort levels. And even if changing up your conference rooms and all your spaces isn't an option right away, one of the smaller things that you can do to these spaces is not necessarily always adjust the furniture, but create a more technology focused area. You can see here a standard conference room, one table, but we've brought in a television screen. And not, not only would we bring in a television screen, but we would also recommend bringing in teleconferencing equipment, cameras, microphones, allowing you to dial in remote hybrid workers that, that aren't into the office into that in-person meeting so that everyone's on the same playing field and it's like they're actually there even if they're not. And so spinning around over here, one of the last pockets of this office I, wa I want to show you is this large team up space. So if you ever think of 
uh, multiple smaller teams or even one large team that are really dynamic. They work together a lot. A space like this is a great fit. Um, aesthetically, it's bright and open, inspiring creativity, but functionally, these workstations are created in, in kind of a pinwheel shape where each workstation is facing another and it is automatically built to start to provide that collaboration and spark interest in conversation. But even while doing that, as I switch to a different view, you can see that each station is physically separated. There's a metal barrier between them all. And while that's a hard surface, easily cleanable solution, it looks like a permanent solution. It's not just a temporary barrier, but something for the long term that doesn't feel like the right now. So thinking through this space too, not only is it great in terms of functionality, cleanability, but this really promotes one of the concepts that's been growing for a while, but, but has really been refocused on since the pandemic. Uh, it's the concept of hot desking or, or a free real estate office. And what I mean by that is if I'm an employee that comes into this office every day and sits down and, and does my work, I don't have a permanent desk to go to. I can come in and sit at this desk here with the laptop open for the day. I pack up all my stuff. I go home. I come back the next day and I can choose to sit up there at that desk with the green laptop open. And everyone around me can do the same thing. So depending on what projects I'm working on uh, and different things like that, I can switch up who I'm sitting with, where I'm sitting, to what makes the most sense for the project at hand. What's really great about that is not only does it offer the opportunity to give more accessibility to workers in how they work, but if nobody has any stuff on these desks at the end of the day, it makes it very easy to come through and clean all of the surfaces. So not only does it maximize function, but free real estate or hot desking can also maximize cleanability too. And thinking about that and thinking about the entire open plan, we haven't seen a lot of smaller spaces, getaway spaces, breakaway points. And something that is important before you say, oh, Jack, I got to go tear apart my office, bring in all of these benches. Um, make sure you think about breakaway points. These are great little pockets that might have been a private office, a small conference room at one point that you can use for priority work. You think of important phone calls, heads down or focus time, or even hosting a webinar, right? Build out these small little breakaway points designed for one user that they can set up shop and stay for a few hours if need be and employee satisfaction really skyrockets with this. I know around here we have more and more of these breakaway points and for hosting webinars, hosting calls now more than ever before, people really appreciate those spots. And then lastly, one other area that I want to show you here today uh, is what I think of as a social hub. And it's probably one of the biggest reasons people are excited to come back to the office. It's different than that sock seating I showed you before, those little touchdown spaces out in the open. It is truly meant to have a completely different feel in the office. So this is a space separate from where you do your work. You know, you, I'll spin you around here quick. And you don't see cubicles. You don't see private offices or conference rooms, but it's truly built as a social hub, right? And it's that growing trend of creating a third space, someplace other than home or work to do your job, meet with coworkers and have conversation. Think of this as your local Starbucks, your favorite coffee shop, having those sorts of feel and, and vibe and tone built into the space. So there's going to be a lot of soft seating. There's going to be a lot of individual pockets for people to go by themselves or to meet one on one too. So you can see a larger space here to share your screen, have a small team meeting. And then different booths kind of scattered throughout as well to be able to easily touch down and, and have that conversation. Rounding out these spaces, a lot of times some of the best conversations are had, you know, over lunch in the break room. Pairing this with all the amenities that you might need 
in a break room will really maximize the use of the space too and, and make this one of the most popular areas within the office. So you can see the name of the game. It's low, it's comfortable, it's inviting. Um, you can see with even these larger tables in the middle, they have a large bench to them, creating that casual kind of picnic style that allows for people to simply catch up. Oftentimes, we haven't seen each other in, in quite the long time. And part of going to the office and doing work is just connecting with other people. So whether it's together here in this instance, or even in more individual seating, we can accommodate and build out these social hubs to really excite people and drive interest in them, wanting to return to the office, staying in the office, and enjoying their time here with the coworkers. And that's truly what our job in creating furniture is all about, is creating these thoughtful, mindful places for people to, to end up doing their best work. So it looks like I've come up on the half hour. We've rounded out our tour here on the dot. Uh, I want to thank you all for sitting here and going through the tour with me. If you have any questions at all, please enter them into the chat. I know I'm here, Dash, the AAA team. We're all excited to hear from you and, and talk through any of those questions you might have. Hey, Jack, it's Steve. It's Steve. I do want to add about two or three minutes of additional ideas for the how to how to morph the office to be in the place the your employees want to come back to, your teams want to come back to, to build that collaboration, to keep the culture that here in the Bay Area is just so important for people is to have that point of differentiation, that point of, of togetherness. So you covered a few of them, but one of the things I'd like to mention just goes with ergonomics. You did show the sit stand all over, but whether it's sit stand, whether it's vertical mice, whether it's special keyboards, whether it's path lighting, one of the ways to try to differentiate the home market from the work market and make the work market more attractive to return to is to make their work environment, frankly, more comfortable at their desktop. So while you did a great job, Jack, with the furniture itself, we also as AAA can package in those accessories that actually will make it so that an employee gets up in the morning and they say, I want to get some stuff done. Where can I get it done better? Well, not only do I want to be in the office to see my peers and collaborate, but frankly, my workstation's better. I just like working there. I'm more productive. I'm more comfortable. I'm more safe. I'm more ergonomically correct. So that's another part of the return to the office that you may want to relook at is just saying, what are the ergonomic standards, not just to keep your people safe, but to make it so they want to work at the office, so they want to come back into the space. The next thing I'll mention, uh, which Jack mentioned, was on the break rooms. We have coffee brewers. We provide full service, but the bean to cup coffee, the espresso coffee, the water, the food, the beverages, Many companies in the Bay Area have invested heavily in them. A lot of people shut it down during the pandemic. The sooner you start looking at ways to reopen that to your employees and make it a place you can come back and you can have your Starbucks experience in the office without going out to Starbucks, that you can enjoy those amenities. So we're finding a lot of companies are starting to look very carefully or very quickly at returning to having not only the amenities they had, but how can you enhance them to make that office a space the employee wants to return to? Beyond that, some things many of you have heard us cover, but the, some other things that may be quite important in this environment of the future, this office of the future, relates to air purification. If an employee comes back and they see you have air purification, dealing with the air, with the viruses, with the germs, if they see you have the type of materials and the disinfection, Jack mentioned that the surfaces are made so they can be cleaned, we can also help you put together very cost-effective programs on how to quickly disinfect at a very cost-effective labor or cost-effective rate with reduced labor, because that's one of the issues. You want to disinfect, but how much can you spend on it? If we can help you with both cost of product and with the approaches to reduce your labor, you can also afford to keep your places more disinfected, making it more comfortable for people to think, I don't mind returning to the office. Finally, or two last things to mention, environmental. People for a year and a half have been avoiding or ignoring the environment as much as politically and such we're talking about becoming a green world. But on our day-to-day -day basis, a lot of the green standards went away. You know, compostable products, the emphasis on these different things. But whether it's the furniture and its standards related to how it's made or how it actually gets recycled or whether it's everything else in your office, 
we would encourage you in the in getting people back is don't forget the green footprint. People are concerned about it. We can help you whether it's with a furniture with green aspects or with anything else in the office. And it is the time to not all of us, we kind of forgot about it, but that may want to be something you consider about. How do you continue showing your 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 teams that you care about the environment and the office environment is, is concerned about that? We think that may be hotter than ever, given the political climate today and something you may want to focus on and making it the type place people feel great about returning to. And last but not least, work from home. If you're interested in helping your employees with their home configurations, many companies have already done that, but we have entire standards programs we can work with you on that we can put them together. They can go under your corporate account. You can set the items that you want to approve. You can put them through approval levels. There's lots of great things we can do with you that as you figure out where you're at with this hybrid workforce type concept or even a totally remote workforce, we can help you create standards to keep your employees within budget using ergonomically correct furniture, operating safely, being productive for you, and being appreciative of what you do for them. So again, please do think of us for work from home with all the solutions we can bring you. Many of, most of them from Han, but from other manufacturers as well. We're highlighting Han, but we have many, uh, you know, solutions for you that may help. So Jack or anyone else, maybe Stephanie, I can hand it back to you, but, uh, you know, getting people to come back to the office of tomorrow is largely the furniture, but there's so much more to make them comfortable. So that would be what I'd add on to that. Fact. Thanks. Great. Thank you, everyone. Um, it was a great presentation. That was great. And Steve, for your insight on all the other things our company does that I think even I forget what we do. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, you can go ahead and enter the chat now or you can unmute and ask a question. Anybody? Okay. Um, after we wrap up, you feel free to reach out to your salesperson or myself if you think of something. We'd be more than happy to answer that for you. Um, we want to thank you all again for attending today. We will be sending you all um, a copy of the recording of this so you can um, peruse through it at your leisure, and then you may have questions. And again, we're here for you. Um, that's all I can tell you. Thank you very much for your time. And if you won one of our prizes today, Gail will get a hold of you this afternoon. Thank you so much.